All right, y'all, it's fall. So that means it's one of the best times you can get out here and make some compost. All right, here we go, y'all. I'm excited. Beautiful day. It's a day the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's honestly, I mean, you can't beat this weather. I mean, what, mid-60s, T-shirt weather? Speaking of T-shirts, this one right here, if you need one, go to Eric Sider's YouTube channel. We'll go ahead and link it up. In fact, we're going to embed his video regarding the chicken tractor on steroids in an urban setting so you can get an overview that's one of the number one actually we're going to be covering the number one number two questions we get most in this video that is about compost and about the chicken tractor on steroids but before i get hot and popping just remember we got that awesome start to finish butchery video on how you can take a pig on four legs put it in the freezer for about half the price all right y'all time to get into it when to as always, we're filming, so the wind's kicking up. That's what it is. Okay, so all of the meat birds that were in here have now graduated to the freezer, all of, but about 10 of them. And the ones that aren't are down there in that other chicken tractor right over there, and they've made the integration, I mean, seamlessly. Everybody's getting on along fine. And um, we'll, we'll talk in the future about how that system's gonna unfold. But here we are. They clearly didn't finish this pile here. We took the cage from around it. This was their last pile and it's not finished. So what do we do with it? Well, we bring the right dog to the hunt. Now in this system, we use a 30 day system in this chicken tractor on steroids, okay? So from the time it starts till the time it goes on out and it's finished, that's 30 days. But today, we're gonna bring that dog to the hunt that everybody could use right now. And that is the 18 day Berkeley compost method. And we're going to use what we have on hand. Now, here's the cool part about all this. This is the compost pile that wasn't complete, wasn't finished. So it's got a combination of a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of food scraps that are left in there, and a lot of carbon. But we're going to be adding a lot of the other things. Let's go over here to the road and let me show you what we got. Okay. The other day when I was in Asheville, every doggone lawn you can find out there has leaves in it. I mean, tons of them. I could have filled that truck up probably 30 times over in just one neighborhood. Now, in addition to that, we're gonna be using some uh, Washington DC, AKA bull poop. That's right here in these buckets. We got that from Coco. It's not necessary, but that's what we're gonna use. Now, remember, as you get into the fall, your green material isn't going to be as plentiful as you would typically have, you know, in more of your growing seasons. Now, right there in the back of my truck over here, we got, we got all this rubbish that came out of the garden, okay? A lot of vines, there's a little bit of everything in there. So before we use that, we'll actually take this machete here and chop it up. If you don't, you're going to be wishing you did. Now, we got the rest of it here, and this is important, but I waited to take the lids off because it's been sitting for a couple of days. Now, what do we got in here? Chicken feathers. Let's see here. More feathers. Oh yeah, a little bit of guts and feathers. Straight up guts. Guts and legs, blood. Yeah, there's a reason I'm going up and down real quick, y'all. So this is all the byproduct. This is all the stuff on the chickens we didn't eat. Now, just like the great Jeff Lawton says, if it lived, it can live again. And it's going to live. This is why I'm able to do, and I mean, don't think for a minute that when I process animals, it's a flip thing. It's a very sacred act. It really is. And the only way I'm able to reconcile it in my mind is knowing that every single part of that animal will be used again to make more. It, it's going to take care of, believe it or not, in some back back door sort of fashion it's going to be ultimately taking care of our laying flock over here okay that's the beauty about this because we're going to take all these components this the leaves the leftover uh compost cage that didn't get used up and those greens and we're going to put it all together to make the best compost ever if you've watched any of our videos before on making an 18 day pile this is exactly the same doggone cage we're just recycling it every single time 
So we could basically, if we wanted, we could basically take the compost piles that are previous to this, put them in one big pile and basically continue. But where's the fun in that? We got all this material we got to use up, so why not use it? So son, tell them how this thing is going to layer through here. So the first layer that you do on an 18 day compost pile is your uh, carbon layer. You want to make sure you have a carbon diaper and a carbon uh, roof. So the first and last layer are going to be carbon and then we're going to layer in our uh, green material and then manure. So it's going to be carbon, green material, and then manure. But Basically manure carbon, and, nitrogen all the way through, right? Right, but the green material and the manure are going to be slightly different for us today. All right. Kinda. So, well, that's exactly where we're going to start now. Tell them also the water component. Now, this is where I, I want to make sure we don't confuse anybody because the way you look after your water in a compost, in a 30 day compost system, like in the chicken tractor on steroids is totally different than what you're going to look at it in this system. And the reason why in that system, it's open to the air, it's open to the elements. So you're going to have to play around with how much rain is falling from the sky. How much do I need to add it when I flip it? And that all comes by feel. But tell them, son, how this is going to be well, totally different. The, also, the 30-day, the chickens are going through and scratching and, and uh, like making it evaporate, the water evaporate faster. On this 18-day compost pile, we're going to add all the water it needs at the beginning. So like today will be when we add all the water it needs, if we do it correctly. And we're going to have the hose basically going the whole time. We want to completely saturate this pile. So that's the big difference here. Um, we'll explain it as we go along, but with that said, we start with the leaves. Uh, so we can either start with the leaves or the old, uh, the started compost from the chicken tractor on steroids. Well, you're gonna work the hose and we can do because we got we should wet the bottom before we even start. Right. Correct? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm something of an expert when it comes to compost in the chicken tractor on steroid system, but William learned under the best on planet Earth, and that's Jeff Lawton, and. Um, so he knows his way around this system. I'm, I'm conversational, but he is much better at it than I am. So we're taking all the cues, cues from him today. Here's some of that stuff that came out of the garden and it's, it's all viney as you can see. I guarantee you, if you throw this thing in there like that, when it's time to flip, you are going to take the mothballs off of words you may not use every single day, you dig? So you wanna chop these up, but I'm gonna go straight up Japanese samurai warrior on this. Ha! In fact, it can be kind of fun. Look at this. I learned this watching that movie Shogun. difficult to see but this is what we got so far okay right here at the bottom clearly there's our carbon that's all basically leaves right above it and you can't see that part you probably saw it as we were doing it but we got bull manure in there and then right above that bull manure because it's not enough nitrogen we have what is basically um, just leftover garden material you know things we can't eat and then above this this is the part now this is where it gets a little tricky because at this point right here we have basically the compost pile over here that the birds didn't finish now in here already is a combination like you can see like there's some food scraps here uh some of that trombuccino squash i didn't get to we got a little bit of carbon and a little bit of nitrogen so this stuff is essentially already mixed so we just got to be a little more careful about it so but the biggest thing we're trying to use up right now if we got to make another pile with this and the one that you can't see in the frame over there that's okay but the bigger thing is is using up these materials 
So now that we've done that, the next thing, now that we got a combination of carbon and nitrogen, just by experience, it seems like we're a little low on the nitrogen department. So now we're gonna add some. And like they said in the army, what makes the green grass grow? Well, the red blood. And there's something to that. So we got some chicken blood we're gonna throw in there. We're gonna throw some feathers in there. That's gonna count as nitrogen. So that's what's going down next. All right, so there's a combination of everything in there. Feathers, guts, I mean, feet, you name it. Now, this is critical. We're gonna cover this, make sure we cover it in carbon. We usually like to do this the day of. It's two days later, but it really doesn't make a difference. So I'm just gonna kind of spread this out, make something of a, that'll be its own nitrogen layer. Then I'll add some more leaves to it. And then we'll keep the process going. It's basically that. Now I got a few more buckets over there and we'll use it in the next layer. But I'm already seeing a problem here too, and we're gonna figure out how to, how to fix it, is that I know you can't see it in the frame, but this is not level ground. And the higher this gets, the more it's gonna to wanna to flip over. So I'm gonna to have to come up with some kind of way to keep this thing stable, I suspect. So anyway, I'll go ahead and spread this out and then we'll keep the water going and keep the, um, keep the layers going. All right, there you have it. But you can see that this thing is leaning quite a ways. And as the water settles more and more, it's gonna to wanna to push it that way because you know the water's going down. So if I didn't have this, I'm basically this is, in addition to having spikes on the front of the chicken tractor, we always kind of take this, we put a um, Prusik knot around the bar and then spike them into the ground. Now, if I didn't have these, it's exactly the same stuff. I'll just go ahead and use my boot laces. 550 cord or um, survivor cord always got that in there in fact we're probably going to do some videos on that here before long so what i'm going to do is on this end actually i'm probably a little high but let me take that back out and go down one this is just going to help it a little bit in the past i've taken um i've taken like ratchet straps and stuff and stuck it in there and we're just going to go ahead and kind of help it a little bit so there we got it a little bit tethered um, probably go get a ratchet strap and then kind of anchor it to the ground and just to make sure this thing doesn't fall over so it's gonna be like this for a few days and then we're gonna flip it we'll walk you through the whole process in fact go and check out our 18-day compost pile playlist if you want to know specifics on how we're gonna do this so now what we're gonna do we got carbon nitrogen carbon nitrogen and then we start with carbon and we end with carbon, which is what we got here on top. Now, where this differs again is that we're going to cover this with a tarp. And then I'll put a, a bungee cord around this thing. And then after about, like I said, we're using a whole different hog on, or dog on this hunt. That's the Berkeley method. So this will be done in about 18 days if we do everything right, which I think we will. So whereas the moisture content on that, you got to play with it. This one here, you add it all on the front end if you did it right. Throughout this process, we shouldn't have to add any more moisture to it. The only thing we missed, and I can't believe we're missing because we're surrounded by it, is comfrey. We would put an entire layer of comfrey in there because it is a dynamic accumulator. And it's also something of a starter for this pile, which you don't really need it in this kind of pile, but it really doesn't hurt because of all the minerals it's gonna bioaccumulate. We want it in this pile. So we put mountains of comfrey in just about everything we do. All right, with that said, I want to get into another area that we're going to cover in this video and that is this little snippet you're going to see next of my friend Eric Sider giving you an overview of the chicken tractor on steroids but in an urban setting. So the people that have asked, well man I have no idea how to scale this down to make it work in my environment. Eric covers it all. In fact, this Sunday we're going to do a live Q&A with Eric and uh, we're going to go through this whole thing for all those people out there that are that are looking to replicate this sort of thing all right you need comfrey bone sauce any of that stuff check it out at the website emp shields we got that sort of thing down below along with a number of other things you might need and also don't forget to check out the ballinest 
and I mean ballinest. Butchery video out there is done by me and Jason from Sow the Land. You can find that down below as well. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. Hey, Eric Sider here, and I am coming to you from the best chicken composting system on the planet, the Chicken Tractor on steroids. Big shout out to Jeff Lawton for designing this amazing continuous engine of fertility that will keep your garden highly productive, highly nutritious, and food secure forever. And here, this is the urban system. So this one, stationary system. So if you're short on space and short on birds, then this is the system you wanna check out. All you need is a minimum of 170 square feet or 16 square meters, about eight to 12 birds, and a cubic meter of material. <clears throat> so the tried and true recipe is one third chicken bedding, one third food scraps, green plants and weeds, and then one third large animal manure. Now, obviously in the US, it's less common to have access to large animal manure in urban and suburban settings. So for my version, I've omitted the large animal manure and I'm just running with the chicken bedding and food scraps and weeds and green plants. Now, I've done a whole 18 day compost with just food scraps and straw. So it's definitely possible and you're definitely gonna get a good supercharged compost at the end. You can check that whole playlist out. So the basic procedure from start to finish on the urban system, it's gonna be two months till you get your first compost pile. So you're gonna be filling up the cage for the first month. And then that material comes out here and gets turned once a week for the second month. And then once you're up and running, you should be pumping out a cubic meter of compost every month. So all week long, you're gonna be adding the uh, plants and food scraps. And then once a week, you add the bedding under the chicken coop or roost. And then once that's full, that comes out here, start turning it once a week, and then you're off and running again. And uh, if you're in a drier climate, I recommend uh, watering the pile a few times a week because if it dries out it's going to be slower to break down basically the more work you want to do the faster you're going to get a finished pile so if you want to turn it multiple times a week you certainly can do that or you can let the chickens do what they do best scratch and eat weed seeds and that's another uh, benefit to this system you want to move all your bulk material through the system and the chickens are going to get all those weed seeds and break those pest cycles for you. So one of the best things about this system is its flexibility. It's highly adaptable to different situations, number of chickens, how much you want to interact with it. Basically, if you want a faster, more refined product, you're going to be doing more work. If you want a rougher, slower process, let the chickens do their thing. At, in the end, it's all going to be amazing for your garden. Now, I uh, just completed my first pile, so I have a whole playlist from start to finish. Definitely check that out. And uh, as always, the best permaculture shirts on the planet. The link is below, as well as all these uh, components to the urban system if you want to get a similar setup for yourself. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.